Another really hot topic that I want to talk about here <clears throat> is this whole concept of small dense particles and the large particles. And it's, some are okay and some are not. Can you talk about that whole thing? Yeah, I've been doing advanced. So if you go to your doctor, if you go to a church, if you get your work physical, you're not going to know that. You're going to get the standard cholesterol profile, total cholesterol, HDL, triglycerides. Uh, you do need to be fasting to get a valid fasting triglyceride levels. LDL is usually not measured directly. LDL is calculated. So the, the part of the lipid panel that's most predictive of cardiovascular disease and that cardiologists are taught to monitor and adjust, the LDL is usually actually a calculated number, which is a problem. It's called the Friedenwall equation. We learned about it 50 years ago. So advanced cholesterol profiles were developed about a decade ago. I've been using them for about that time and maybe 10,000 patients by this point. I've looked at so many of them. And you do. You can look at um, the LDL particle number, the LDL particle size, and then you can look at small LDL particle numbers. And published data from the Framingham study from something called the uh, MESA trial show that you can better predict the future development of stroke or heart attack using these advanced lipid profiles. And recently, there's at least one study that says if a clinician will use these advanced profiles, and instead of treating to the LDL, they use that LDL particle number as the goal, which is more stringent, more difficult. Your LDL may look okay. It may be 98, and your normal doctor would say awesome LDL, but when you get the particle number, it's still up. So now we got to keep treating. More diet, more lifestyle, more weight control, and maybe more medication more flaxseed and, and everything else that works. Um, so it matters. Now, I mean, all LDL is associated with cardiovascular disease. So whether it's you're just getting a simple lipid profile and your LDL is up, there's a linear relationship, cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular death. If you're doing the LDL particle number, there is. If you're doing the small LDL particle number, there is. And, you know, the large fluffy LDLs, there still is a relationship. So um, they're valid and they're useful and they add information, but are there some cholesterols you just ignore and tell the patient, good deal, you got the large fluffy LDLs, uh, and even though they're extremely high, you don't have to worry about it? No, that doesn't seem to be the case. The endothelium can still take them up if damaged, if there's inflammation, if there's lipoprotein A around causing a, a vascular damage or homocysteine levels causing vascular damage, you still take that fluffy LDL up into your arteries and begin the process of plaque development. So, you know, the best cholesterol is a low cholesterol. And you make plenty of vitamin D and you make plenty of sex steroids, you make plenty of cell membranes in your brain. You know, there's a genetic disorder where you run a lower um, LDL than the average American. Uh, and, and, and you do it for your whole life, from birth, your whole life. And there's a horrible side effect if you run a low cholesterol your whole life. It's called you live longer than the average American. <laughs> And that's been the data. And that's not there's um, genomic wide analysis, or that's a that's a big mouthful for some of the people listening. But I was involved in a study at Wayne State University where we modeled what happened, to, what would happen if from children all the way up, um, their cholesterol was lower than average, and we came up with the same conclusion in like three hundred thousand genetic analyses. You just have a much lower risk of heart disease if you could keep your cholesterol down your entire life. So, so it sounds like what you're saying is that both the small dense uh, LDL particles as well as the large fluffy LDL particles are both atherogenic, meaning that they actually are going to promote cardiovascular disease. It's just that the large fluffy LDL particles seem to be less detrimental than the smaller dense particles. Yeah, and that's true. And the relationship to this argument is the paleo movement, Dr. Ronald Krauss, that's his area of research, Oakland, California, will point to the fact that the high-fat, low-carb diet may convert some of the small, dense LDL to an altered panel at uh, more of the larger LDL particle numbers. But they're all atherogenic, and so has the Ornish data. The Ornish diet that showed reversal of cardiovascular disease published in 1990, 1998, something there's no paleo data equivalent for, showed also a decrease in small, dense LDL particle numbers in a sub-study that was published. So, you know, it gets down to that question. If you're going to try and be thin, lower your cholesterol, control your blood sugar, do you want to do it with a dietary plan that also happens to have mortality advantage as cardiovascular, you know, atherosclerosis prevention and regression, cancer prevention, regression, dementia, or do you want to do it with a diet that the low-carb, high-fat diet seems to be associated with longer 
uh, mortality risk or higher mortality risk long term. That, that's what is most disconcerting as you know never mention the environment never mention animal rights never mention long-term mortality and cardiovascular risk and sounds like a great diet except you know maybe we ought to be talking about those four kind of aha moments